Hello and welcome to the ARCS. We're live here from ISM Raceway for the running of the Subway Eat Fresh 60. Well folks, it's a rainy one here today, but we got the go-ahead to start the engines and the drivers will most likely be pushing extra hard to get to the halfway point. Last week's winner, Denzel Scott, claimed his first career victory in three seasons. Now, let's take a look at your top 10 drivers in the field. Starting at the pole, the 93 of Deacon Gentleman. In second, Blubber Plumber. In third, Cooper Hones. In fourth, Darren Kiefer. In fifth, Andy Seville. In sixth, Aiden King. In seventh, Maxwell Smart. In eighth, Diego Tacone. In ninth, Cassidy Reynolds. And rounding out your top 10, Joffrey Weeds. Let's look through the rest of the field here at Phoenix, and we'll get right on into the action in the Subway Eat Fresh 60. And we're live here at Phoenix International Raceway. And it looks like Deegan Gentleman's gonna lead us here to green, but folks, we have an issue brewing. And it's not just on the racetrack, it's in the sky. If you look around the racetrack, you'll see a lot of low-hanging clouds here in Phoenix. You don't normally see that here in the desert, but we might see some rain here today, so the drivers are gonna be pushing extra hard in this one. But Deegan Gentleman with a fairly nice start there. Cooper Hones stalking that 93. Oh, and Cooper holds the inside. Will we see a pass for the lead here on the first lap? It's going to be a drag race to the start-finish line, and I think that 43 car might have got it there. No. Oh, and the 43 car got second by three hundredths of a second. That is really close. But Cooper Hones with the lead right now. Deacon Gentleman on the outside, and Andy Seville in that 83 Mountain Dew machine is in third. But good run for Cooper Hones, the rookie, here at Phoenix thus far, but we still have a long way to go here in the desert. But that 93 of Deacon Gentleman, our pole sitter, has dropped to third place on the outside line with Andy Seville getting a little bit of draft off that 43 car. But how about Cassidy Reynolds up here in the fourth place position? Ca oh, we got an accident, folks. We have a big one in the back as I just saw a car come down from being airborne and we'll have to get a replay of that one. But many cars are junked here. But Cooper Hones leads back to the stripe and we'll get a replay in just a moment. And we're back here at Phoenix. Let's take a look at the replay here. Oh, and Quinn Porter gets punted by the 12 car and nearly goes over as Quinn Porter with a hellacious hit here at ISM Raceway, but that 40 of Chris Hergeson is just chilling as well. So he's got a barbecue brewing underneath that one, and we'll get another replay of the accident in just a moment. And here's another view of the accident that happened in front of that last wreck. Diego Tacon goes around right in front of Bl Blubber Plumber there. Oh, and Blubber Plumber not happy with that two car, and his face is just a little crinkled there, but obviously not a good start for these drivers here at Phoenix. And here's a view from the Blubber Vision camera here at Phoenix. Oh, and that two car spinning right in front of him. Almost thought he was clear. And he gets checked up in front of him. And as you can see here, the 23 car from this far chase view is flipping going into turn three. But that's the accident here at Phoenix. And we're back here from ISM Raceway. And Andy Seville has dropped to the inside of the track. We believe he's going to pit... Listening to radio communications here, they're debating the strategy call, and the 83 of Andy Seville is going to come down really early in this race. Not sure why he's coming from second place, but we'll have to see how this one pans out as Andy Seville slides through the pit lane, and he will be our first pitter here in the Subway Eat Fresh 60. As you can see, those ominous clouds looming in the background, but we'll get back to the action here at Phoenix at just a moment. And we're back here at Phoenix. Cooper Hones your leader, but two cars out of this event, the 40 of Chris Hergeson is out and will finish in 41st place, and then in 40th place will be the 23 car of Armando O'Reilly, who flew through the air here at Phoenix early in this race. And we're back to green here at Phoenix International Raceway, and that cactus is absolutely lit up, and you can tell it is dark around here because that cactus is glowing, and Cooper Hones is your leader still, but Deacon Gentleman is there, folks. Cassie Reynolds up there as well. We saw her battling for on the fourth place position, and I think we got a car back there pitting, but we'll have to take a look, and that's the 34 of Jerry Funk. So an offbeat strategy for Jerry Funk here early in the desert. Nine laps of 60 complete here in this one, and the Subway eat fresh 60. But Cooper Hone's still your leader, 
And that 93 of Deacon Gentleman, oh, he is there, but he just cannot get enough draft off the 43 in the corner to try and die below that strong 43 here in the subway. Eat fresh 60, but Cooper Holmes, man, he took it from the reins early in this race. He was absolutely bull riding his way through the field, and he is now finding himself up at the front, and he is not giving it up. As you can see, Darren Kiefer there in that Dodge. Coca-Cola Dodge passing Mitch Barrier there. And Darren Kiefer will complete the pass. And I believe he'll move up into the sixth place position. So good job for Darren Kiefer there. David Long, the rookie, as you can see here in that 99 Sitgo car. He was looking to make a move on Mitch Barrier as he saw Darren Kiefer and Mitch Barrier too wide there. But he's not going to luck into another easy pass here at Phoenix. But that five car. How about that five car? Jacob Bradley. And that nice yellow scheme. Ooh, almost made contact with Aiden King there. Nearly touched fenders, but the five car of Jacob Bradley will pass Aiden King. And Aiden King's getting hung out to dry in the outside lane. As he's got that 47 of Tyler Seville be beneath him here. And that 47 of Tyler Seville, he's seen victory lane this season as he was our Daytona 500 champion. Well, the equivalent of the Daytona 500, but... Still an amazing feat for that team, as they had not won in a while. But that seven car, how about that seven car? A nice throwback to Alan Kowicki, the Xerox machine, and actually was the winner of the very first Phoenix race. So throwing it back to Alan Kowicki here for Benedict Schumacher. But Cooper Hone still out front here in this one, and we don't know when the rain's coming, folks. As you can see, Jerry Funk. Jerry Funk actually might be making a strategy call. He's probably going to try to pit early and then stay out as long as he can, hoping for the rain to fall while these... Oh, and we got somebody with an engine expired, and it's Jerry Funk! What the funk is up here at Phoenix as Jerry Funk is on the apron? And I don't know, folks. I don't think there's going to be a caution for that unless there's fluid on the track. But Jerry Funk is out of this event, most likely... And that is an absolutely devastating blow to Jerry Funk in the points, as he was actually sitting not too great in points as it was. But if he just would have had a couple solid finishes in a row, we might have seen him making a charge toward the playoff cut line. But how about at that 18 car here of Robbie Margot back there with a different scheme on there? But that 43 man of Cooper Hones has just been lights out here at Phoenix. And that 93 of Deacon Jenem is just hoping to get by that 43 car. And it looks like if you look to the top right-hand corner of your screen, my producer's pointing out that Jerry Funk had a piston issue. So that's why he's out of this event. Probably down a cylinder, and that is definitely not good, especially at Phoenix with things being a such high torque on these cars. As Deacon Jenem is getting passed by Cassidy Reynolds. Cassie Reynolds, we've been talking about her a little bit today. Just every time we see her, man, she's making moves. And she's up to second here. A long ways left to go. Because we have 17 of 60 complete here in the Subway Eat Fresh 60. And while we have a moment, let's take a look at your Subway fastest lap of the day. And that's going to go to the 22 car. Wow, of Sean Carson. So good job for Sean Carson. And I believe he's mired in the back of this pack. Yes, he is. Just imagine if Sean Carson had some room. He possibly could be doing dangerous things, but we'll see on the pit cycle how that shakes out. But watch out for that 22 car later in this race once the pit stops happen. As you can see, that big cloud in the background. I'll point it out when we go by the next lap, but that is a big cloud, folks. And if that rain comes, we got to throw the caution and put the lids on these cars because we cannot have them running in the rain. That would be a very disastrous race, so... We have to understand what kind of precautions we need to take here as the 54 of Michael Redinger goes underneath the 15 of Jack Porter and Redinger will get the position and Diego Tacone's going to try and take advantage of that as he was spinning that 27 car a blubber plumber earlier in this race but he is still in it to win it but he's going to need a phenomenal strategy call on pit lane but Cooper Hone has been Hones has been lights out but interesting story folks this is actually not too out of the ordinary because if you remember the last season in season two that 43 car was piloted by Ricky Quinn who won won at Phoenix 
and then also won at Dover the next race, so we're seeing that 43 crew right where they left off, and we could actually be setting a new record as well, because we've never had a team go back-to-back season-to-season, so we could be seeing a first here in the ARCS, so that STP crew knows what's up here at Phoenix, and they are definitely gapping that 32 car of Cassidy Reynolds, it was about five tenths of a second the last time by. Let's see what the delta is now. Oh, and Cassidy Reynolds lost some time there. Two hundredths of a second Cassidy lost. It's not a lot here around this course, but definitely to that 43 car, it is a wide margin. As you can see, the lap cars, or about to be lap cars, that we're taking a look at there. And that could play into this race as well, so don't count that out. But Cooper Hones is still your leader here. 23 of 60 complete here in the subway eat fresh 60 as you can see Richard Morphy his car is pretty morphed in the front of that thing and he is absolutely looking to take that car to the junkyard after this race and that's definitely not something Cooper Hones wants to see in front of him as a damaged car that could possibly I mean blow a piston you could have an issue in front of you and that oil could get on your car and you could be slip slip sliding away into the outside retaining wall as Richard Morphy's still there, but this weather still has held off. Very impressive, as you can see the view here. Just look at those clouds, and the flag is waving pretty fast there as we went by on our camera angle, and those winds and rains are coming, folks. And we just have to get to halfway here. Six laps, well, technically five now, as they cross the stripe, and there is Richard Morphy, Morphy in the peripheral view of that leader of Cooper Hones, this could be the decider here. And don't forget about Ryan Hubbs, I believe, up there as well, who is still in front of this pack. So Richard Morphy trying to stay on the lead lap, but those plans might come to an end here pretty early in this race around the halfway portion. This Cooper Hones, man, we've said his name a lot here today, but he is your leader still over that 32 of Cassidy Reynolds, and Cassidy Reynolds has lost some significant time, and she's back to six tenths of a second, but Richard Morphy here is the first car about to go a lap down that I know of. Cooper Hones dives to the inside, and no problemo for that 43 car of Cooper Hones, and he will get around the 21, his first hurdle really here in this race as he has been lights out, as we have said. We'll see if Cassidy Reynolds gained some time there, or if she kind of minded the gap there just a little bit. As Cassidy Reynolds, if you look to the top right of your screen, Cassidy Reynolds cut it down about two tenths of a second that last lap, not counting the lap car, so we'll definitely have to see what this looks like now for Cassidy Reynolds, as she is absolutely stalking that 43 car, and we'll take a look at the Delta here, and as it closed, ooh, just barely, by one hundredth of a second, but that still is something in the grand scheme of things here, as this 14 injured car of Cooper, or not Cooper Hones, I should say, Cooper Hones is your leader, but the 14 of Ryan Hubbs, and that damaged car is gonna hold up that 43 car here in just a moment. And there you can see the Dodge of Ryan Hubs without a front end. He is... doesn't have a hood either. He's just kind of letting that thing uh, air cool out there. He doesn't need his radiator that much. But Cooper Hollins is catching dramatically here. And we're almost to halfway, folks, so this is important because this could be the race, whatever the rain falls, or if it does fall here at Phoenix. That 14 car just trying to get that thing to the end of this race here at Phoenix. Oh, Cooper Holmes caught him at a pretty good time. Will Cassidy Reynolds get him in the same? No. Oh, and that's going to hold up Cassidy Reynolds. That is not what the Cassidy Reynolds camp needed to see here. Ooh, is that 14 makes a little contact with Cassidy Reynolds? I think maybe. Might have been just the camera angle, but that looked like it barely kiss the right side of Cassie Reynolds' car. But that's going to slow down Deacon Gentleman as well. Oh, maybe. Deacon, I think, caught that 14 car just at the right time in the dog leg there. And how about Darren Kiefer up here as well? Doing a pretty good job. Followed by Maxwell Smart, Mitch Barrier, David Long, and that five car of Jacob Bradley. Rounds out your rough top eight there. But Cooper Hones still with a sizable margin. But Cassie Reynolds in the 32 cut it down to 32... 0.32 seconds there, and we'll see what it is now. Ooh, down to three-tenths of a second for Cassidy Reynolds. And it's definitely churning in the right direction here. 
as Deacon Gentleman is just hoping these leaders go side by side and maybe give him a shot. Oh, we get a crash! Right on, the camera angle was right on point as Mitch Barrier goes around. Will that be enough for a caution? We'll have to wait and see as he dives to the apron. That car is hurt here. That thing is mangled on the left-hand side, and the flagman's waving the caution. And there's your caution, folks, that Cassidy Reynolds and the rest of this field needed to get to Cooper Hones. And we'll take a look at the pit stops in just a moment as they're coming down. Won't need to cut to a different commercial break there as we've got pit stops right under this live coverage here at Phoenix. That 43 car leads them onto pit road, and we'll see who can make the best call on pit road here at Phoenix. But... The wreckers in the infield better get moving because I bet you they've got some damage to clean up on the track or parts that are on the track, so they better move their butt onto the course. And that 43 car still hasn't come down, but 43 qualified toward the front, so that will mean a pit stop selection at the very front of this pit road. But Deegan Gentleman will slide in front and we'll see who gets it off pit road. I'm interested to see because, oh, how about that two? Oh, I thought that two car was the first car coming off pit road, but Michael Redinger, I believe, is he? Is he in the battle for this lead? He might be, and Michael Redinger, I think, just pulled off a strategy move of the ages, but I wonder if Michael Redinger just took gas. Maybe no tires for Michael Redinger, and that is a strategy play, but field, field positioning here in this race is key. So there's the rest of the drivers coming off pit road as they slot onto this course, and we'll get back to the action here in Phoenix in just a moment. And we're back here at Phoenix, and another car out of this race is Mitch Barrier, who's retired from the session here at Phoenix, hitting that inside wall pretty hard. And then we have a couple cars that are a lap down here that I didn't probably mention earlier in the race, but the eight car is a lap down, and that is Ricky Quinn, season two's winner of this race. The 21 of Richard Morphy's lap down, and the 14, obviously, we saw during live coverage here at Phoenix go a lap down to the leader, and that was Ryan Hubbs. But how about Cassie Reynolds making the bottom lane stick, and I think Michael Redinger's off the pace, folks. Those tires are definitely worth a lot here. Oh my goodness, and Michael Redinger's holding up this field, and that is what Cassie Reynolds wanted to see here in this race. Oh, and we got a caution. Whoa, the backstretch is full of smoke. John Ross Stein. Oh, Jack Porter. Theophilus Morgendorfer Jr., and there's a junkyard back there. And we'll have to get a replay of that, but smoke all over the place. And we'll be back in a moment here at Phoenix. And we're back here at Phoenix. This is the cause for the caution here. Oh, John Rostein, Ralph Johnson, Diego Tacone, and Bob Verstappen get collected. As you can see, the three cars spinning here, trying to avoid the accident. Pretty smart move, actually. Spinning before he got to the place with all the contact, but as you can see, more contact there between John Rostein and Bob Verstappen. And there are all the junked cars here, and we'll get another replay of this accident in just a moment here at Phoenix. And there's the reason here for the other spin that happened is Blubber Plumber got in the wall, but William Donuts in that 12, and the three car go around, and that's the only other thing we have to show you here at Phoenix. And we're back, and we have a replay of something funky that happened. Cooper Hones, not happy with Michael Redinger, and sends him down the pit lane there. My goodness, Cooper Hones... Not happy with Michael Redinger after being blocked on that restart, I believe. So drama between these two drivers and Michael Redinger will have to pit for tires. But that was actually not too bad of a move for Michael Redinger because he needed them badly. And we'll get back to the action here at Phoenix in just a moment. And we're back here at Phoenix. 41 to 60 complete, would be, but we have a lot more drivers out here. As Jack Porter, John Ross Stein are added to the tally in 36th and 35th. And then in 34th, we have the two car of Diego Tacone. And then in 33rd, the 12 car of William Donuts is out of this one. So he is toast. But as we get back to green, there were just those three cars that were still a lap down from the previous caution. As you can see, Cassie Reynolds and Cooper Hones... We wouldn't have wanted any other way here at Phoenix, as these two cars have been the most dominant all day. But Cassie... Oh, we got a couple cars on pit road. I believe that's Matthew Bussey Jr. and the double zero of Draven Sandy. I believe they're trying to pull a strategy out of the magic hat there, but I don't know if that one's going to work. As Cassie Reynolds and Cooper Holmes have been laying waste to this field. Well, Darren Kiefer's made some impressive moves. I think most of his progress has been made on pit road. As he got by Deacon Gentleman in that five car of Jacob Bradley as we got through. Whoa! And David Long nearly gets punted by the one car. And they are definitely racing like this race could be over soon. Well, 
We'll see which comes first, the rain or the checkered flag here at Phoenix. And that could, they could both come hand in hand. We could see rain then checkered pretty quickly, but Deacon Gentleman trying to recl reclaim all of the lost ground that he has given to these drivers. And he is just begging probably for a caution at this point because he is not too terribly far behind the leaders, but it's not unachievable here at Phoenix in the subway Eat Fresh 60. And while we've got a moment of intense battling, let's take a look at your subway fastest lap of the day. And that goes to the 10 car of Matthew Bussey Sr. Where is he on track? We will find him. There he is. He's just riding out a Sunday drive here in the back of the, fa oh, the back of the pack, but we saw contact there. Oh, and speaking of contact, we might see some here as Cooper Hones going for the lead and he wants it back, folks. The dominant run for that 43 car might have just swung the pendulum here at Phoenix and that 32 car is going to the outside. Ooh, and I think Cooper Hones is trying to put some history on us here in the ARCS as we could see that stat be pulled out that the 43 won in season two and possibly could win in season three here. But it's not over till the fat lady sings, and we have a long way left in this one. 13 laps, which is quite a long ways here at Phoenix. And, oh, don't don't forget, by the way, there's still the potential for rain. I know, folks, rain in the desert here at Phoenix, you don't see it often. But when it does happen, it happens because, well, we could see mudslides around the area. You never know. But hopefully they won't get on track here. But the 43 car still reigns supreme here, and you got to... Gotta hope Richard Petty's loving this one here as he's pace car driver in the ARCS, if you didn't know. And he's watching that driver of his go around this track and Richard's thinking of the glory days, folks. And I might have just jinked Richard, <laughs> jinxed Richard Petty coming back out on track by saying the glory days. But hopefully that just means a caution and that doesn't mean it turns out into Bristol dirt, if you know what I mean. But Cooper Hohen's still leading here. Rough, roughly 11 laps to go in this one. Cooper Hone's still your leader, but we could have anything happen, like I've been saying. And while we've got a moment, let's go through the field here, presented by Subway, and we'll take a look at the top 10 drivers in the running order. And we'll see some of these lappers back there as well. Good to point those out, because they could be coming up soon. But the 32 car of Cassie Reynolds had a pretty solid day today. The 93 Deacon Gentleman, solid as well. The 5 car of Jacob Bradley. The 20 of Maxwell Smart. Darren Kiefer in the 39. David Long in the 99. Aiden King in the one, Benedict Schumacher in that seven, and then rounding out your top 10, presented by Subway, that 18 of Robbie Margot. So there's your top 10 in the field. And we got 10 laps to go, so the Subway 10 here in the Subway Eat Fresh 60. But Cooper Hone still holding on here, and I am so surprised that the rain has not come. We've never seen this in the ARCS, never really had to deal with much weather problems here. I mean, we've had some hot days, but other than that, it's been nothing but clear skies for the most part here in the ARCS. So interesting to have some rain threatening the area, but hopefully we'll get this race in. Eight laps to go here in the subway, eat fresh 60, but Cassie Reynolds and Deacon Gentleman are all under a blanket pretty much here up at the front. Three cars within roughly five tenths of a second. That is a pretty close margin. If Cooper Hones just slightly gets over that threshold, he might find himself in the lap of these two drivers behind him because that is that is nothing to scoff at here. Cooper Hones only gained five hundredths of a second over Cassie Reynolds that last lap. So gained slightly, but not enough to really put this one to bed here at Phoenix. And you never know, we could see the stray caution come into play. It's not over, like I said. Which will come first, rain or checkered? We won't know until it happens, but we'll make sure to show you when it happens here at Phoenix. But Matthew Bussey Jr. up there, we might see him as a lap car, but I don't know. We'll have to take a look. Oh yeah, he's probably a good straightaway ahead of these leaders. So it's probably going to be these three cars if they're going to have a shot at the win here at Phoenix. Cooper Hones, your leader, obviously. He's just been dominant all day, and he's trying to make history as well. Unfortunately, we don't have Dover in Season 3 of this schedule, but you know that 43 team would love to see Dover on the schedule and repeat like they did last season with Ricky Quinn. Ricky Quinn not in the 43, but in the 8 car this season, so good for Ricky Quinn to find another ride. 
in the bow ties, but not in Richard Petty's bow tie car. But Cooper Holmes, he's only about four laps, folks, separated from history here, as Blubber Plummer almost did what Tristan Fish helped him do in Season 1 and Season 2 at Rockingham. As Tristan Fish was, if you don't remember, an early driver in Season 1, and he won at Rockingham, and then we almost saw the same car repeat in Season 2, but Blubber Plummer was not able to seal the deal, but that 43 of Cooper Hones and Ricky Quinn might be making a little history. Ricky Quinn in a different car, but history is history nonetheless here at Phoenix. But we could see the stray caution or a lap car come into play. As I believe Matthew Bussey still... Oh no, folks! Richard Morphy is coming up! And Richard Morphy is in an Amish buggy compared to these other cars on the track. And they probably are going to catch him. But Cooper Hones... He does not want to get to the back bumper of that 21 of Richard Morphy. They better have that little triangular sign on the back of that car because they are going to need all the reflection from the light here at the raceway to make sure Cooper Hones gets his way around that car. As Cooper Hones is only negotiating a couple more corners and he's got this one in the bag here at Phoenix. 59 of 60 complete. Which will come first, the checkered flag or Richard Morphy? We'll have to wait and find out, but I think he's going to catch Richard Morphy if he keeps pace like this on the last lap. We'll have to wait and see. Through three and four for the final time, Denzel Scott on pit road. He's a winner. That does not matter. He's locked into the playoffs, but Cooper Hones looking to lock himself in as well. But Richard Morphy stands in the way. We'll see if he catches him at the right time. Cooper Hones dives beneath him. Oh, and he getting, he's getting held up just slightly. Will he make contact with the 21? Maybe spin him out? You never know. Oh, contact's made. Richard Morphy's in the wall. But it's not going to be enough for the 32 of Cassie Reynolds to get to that 43. And Cooper Holmes coming off three and four is going to win here at Phoenix for this Subway Eat Fresh 60. Congratulations and history has been made here today. And let's take a look at your highest finishing rookie in the field. And I believe it's the... 99 to David Long in 8th place, so congratulations to David Long on that rookie award. But Cooper Hones is locked into the playoffs, and him and Ricky Quinn now have an interesting stat here in the ARCS. And we're back here at Phoenix from the running of the subway Eat Fresh 60, and Cooper Hones is locked into the playoffs, folks. But Cassie Reynolds got second place today, and Cassie Reynolds with a good day, but in third, Deacon Gentleman. In fourth, Jacob Bradley. In fifth, Darren Kiefer. In sixth, Maxwell Smart. In seventh, Aiden King. In eighth, David Long. In ninth, Benedict Schumacher. Rounding out your top ten, Robbie Margot. We had a lot of carnage here today, as you can see. About six cars, six or seven cars, give or take, that were a lap or two down in this one, and another six or seven that were all taken out of this event. So, definitely a rough day here in Phoenix. And we'll see you next week, folks. But again, congratulations to Cooper Holmes.